Why I choose Hand Bout Resist My Sissy Books. And um, right, so this is the legs of the, um, what could have been the virus. Going for my system at the moment, just trying to do as many book reviews as I can to finish the Six Mile 60 work, start with a new project. And this one is, that's why I'm literally not changing my tops in between. Do you think, Power Charity, your order's really limited? I'm like, yeah, and right now it is. So, let me start with the book reviews. Here we go. So, The Life List, A Mother's Last Wish, A Daughter's Incredible Challenge by Laurie Nelson Spellman. Okay, so, here we go. Things to do when I grow up, have a baby, fall in love, perform live on a big, super big stage. Brett Bollinger seems to have it all, a plum job, a beautiful home and an irresistibly handsome boyfriend. That is until her beloved mother passes away, leaving behind a will with one stipulation. In order to receive her inheritance, Brett must first complete the list of goals she had written when she was 14. As Brett reluctantly embarks on a perplexing journey in search of an other adolescent dreams, the thing becomes clear. Some of those life's sweetest gifts can be found in the most unexpected places. Okay, so Brett is posh. She's rich. She's privileged. Okay? And her mother's just passed away. She's absolutely devastated. And as I said before, until she gets her millions and millions and millions, you're going to repeat the list. So, <clears throat> this is the list. Okay, this is page 23. And stuff okay is already um, marked out. Okay? But this is she's got to, got to um, complete. And put in one year, for her to get her millions. Here we go. Have a baby, maybe two. Get a dog. Stay friends with Carrie Newsom forever. Help poor people. Have a really cool house. Buy a horse. Fall in love. Perform live on a super big stage. Have a really good relationship with my dad. Be an awesome teacher. Oh yes. Oh yes. So, you've got to get all that. Unlike her brothers, who just basically got their money straight away. Okay. She, uh, she has to complete this life goal. And now the thing is, at the time, so I'm just in my bad leg, that's for the metal. At the time, Brit is working for her mother's company, but her com her mother's company has left her sister-in-law, her sister-in-law, okay? And Catherine Bollinger, the mother, leaves his power to basically fire Brett. Um, Brett, yes, I know, um, that's mentioned quite a bit. Okay, she's got a boy's, um, as a boy's name, but she's a girl. There's a, there's a woman a woman called Jodie, okay? So, Brett has to complete this list to get all her millions. And it's how it changes her life. And this is the kind of thing, okay? Now, Brett is very, very... Basically, she... decides to start teaching as a substitute teacher and goes into, basically, a poor school wearing Prada. They're going to take the mic. So she goes to tutoring instead, Okay? But the thing is about her relationship with her boyfriend, okay? Now, her boyfriend Andrew is basically, he's a dick, okay? And one thing I don't really like is how it kind of goes into the class system, okay? Let's bit here. Three miles and two bottles of wine later, Andrew, her boyfriend, finally spat out the truth. They're facing angry that I pressed him about his past. He told me that his father was a mediocre cabinet maker whose admiration exceeded, far exceeded his accomplishment. His mother worked behind the deli counter at the Duxbury Safeway. And it wasn't a rich kid, but it was desperate to be perceived as one. I had a surge of warmth and respect for Andrew I hadn't felt before. It was an entitled child. He was a self-made man. But to struggle and work for his success. I kissed his cheek and told him I was proud of him that his working class roots would made me love him more. Instead of smiling, he shot me a look of contempt. I knew then that Andrew found nothing admirable about his modest beginnings. And a girl amongst the affluent and left a scar. At once a grave of panic grips me, that poor little rich kid has spent his entire adult life accumulating makers of success, hoping to compensate for his humble roots. I wonder now if I'm just one of them. And it turns out, yes, yes, because the self-made man is basically a dick who, um, after they break up, because the thing is, Brett has got to have a baby to get her millions, okay? And she brings it up with um, Andrew, who... Essentially wants a wants a part of the company. He wants to work in the company. Okay? And he's only dismissive of her life. And obviously not well suited. Because beyond the grave, Kathleen Bo Bollinger was dictating her daughter's life. Yes. And essentially Andrew won't do it, okay? And they break up because they're not happy together. 
we go. So, yes. Because even for about 100 pages of the book, Brett keeps it from her that she's not working for the company because he doesn't want to know his reaction. Because Andrew wants to get on the board. Okay. And in the end, it's just too much and they break up. But Andrew is basically an arsehole who is... As soon as I broke up, is sleeping with her, her friend, okay? A shallow friend. Because Brett lives in a very, very shallow world. However, okay, one thing I am not going to... Um, I'm going to give um, Catherine a pass here because she's also a horrible person. Okay. I look... Um, is your mother going to dictate our lives forever? Think of my necklace. No. No, any other be Catherine's cool. Bullshit. You have the power to bring me on board and you know it. I'm helping with your goals. Oh, baby. And I need to know that you help me with mine. No, I say softly. I can't help you. I don't feel like going against mother on this one. Yeah, because then everyone's changed. Because to get her money, she's got to do these other things. However, I'm going to say this right now, okay? Because they break up, and obviously, no, whatever. Catherine Bollinger, the mother, was a, was, a, was, a, was a total bitch. An absolute total bitch. Okay, I, this part of the list, okay, was have a good relationship with Brett, Brett have a good relationship with her father, even though at this point, okay, her father was dead, okay? No, it wasn't her father. It absolutely wasn't her father. Because the mother had an affair. Because the father had a secret vasectomy. Because he didn't want any more children. And Catherine did. So she she had an affair. So this woman is dictating her daughter's actions from the under grave. Okay. And never told her daughter that she, you know, that she that she had an affair. Even though her actual brother knows. And he's actually kind of ashamed. You know, because of... Um, actually, yeah, of, you know, the, the nature of it. Okay. And he's a bit angry, which is kind of justified. So basically, Catherine Bollinger from Beyond the Grave lied to her daughter, deceived her daughter, sat back and watched her daughter have a bad relationship with her father, who actually wasn't a father in the first place. Never told her daughter the truth. It takes her actions beyond the grave. Yeah, well, she's on a pedestal like she's kind of, some kind of goddess. Oh, certainly Catherine Bollinger. I'm like, no, no, she's just an arsehole. They never lied. Just, but she, Catherine Bollinger was an arsehole. Okay? Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay? Because, obviously, when he mentions a friend that Brett broke up with, is because the friend moved away and basically then got back in and kind of reconnected and told Brett that she was gay. And it kind of ended badly. But when they meet up, it's absolutely fine. And then through that convoluted mess of being with her friend's family, okay, they find her biological father, who also has a daughter, okay, Brett's half-sister, who has Down syndrome, okay, and then for her therapy, they buy the, they get the horse for the therapy. That's all done. It's also convoluted, okay. And then Brett, through her achievements of becoming a shooter, meets Sakita, okay. See San Sanquita, okay. Now Sanquita is you know she's young, she's a teenage single mother, okay, and she's dying, okay. All right, her kidneys are failing. So she lives long enough to give birth, and then she passes away, and then Brett just adopts the baby. And of course, because her last wish was to let Brett adopt her child, and then Brett could, could complete the list. Here you go. Here you go. Jo um, Jode, okay. Between bites tells me what you'd like me to do with Sanquita's baby. Is that the way he says Sankita's baby? As if Austin, that's the name of the baby. Fate was still arbitrary. She's my baby, I'm adopting her. Tomorrow I'm meeting with the social worker, I'm going to save this child, she needs me, and I promise Sanquita. He eyes me while I sip his coffee, when he sets down the cup, he shakes his head. I read a number of you with the goals, didn't she? What do you mean? You don't need this baby, you have your own kid eventually, it might take you a little longer. It'll happen, you just got to be patient. I shake my head. I want this baby, Jode. It has nothing to do with mother's got. I need this baby. She needs me. Alright. He doesn't seem to hear me. Look, you've got to be running low on cash about now. I'd be happy to loan. I stare at him horrified. You think I'm doing this to get my inheritance? Jesus, Jode. You must think I'm just as greedy as Sankita's mother. 
I don't give a damn about that inheritance. I give up every cent for this baby. Do you understand me? Okay. Now, the thing is, Jode, you know, he's a prick. Actually got a point. Now, Brett may sit there again and say, I want to do this for a creator. I want to do this to have a baby. But is she just really only doing it for the millions? It's kind of like she gets this dog. It really gets a mention. This dog. Right, so, yeah. So basically, this is a story, okay, about arsehole parents, okay, privilegedness, rich people, poor people, and also, it never ever tells you how many millions she should have been getting at the end. She gets an inheritance, oh, spoiler territory, but the thing is, it's just so convoluted and so contrived, it comes too easy in a way, you know. I mean, she doesn't just adopt a baby, and a single mother isn't just, you know, this poor struggling single mother who basically has gone through hell, okay. She turned out very, very stable for someone to get whose brother died, okay? And mother's, mother's basically a crackhead. But yet, Secretas has not got these issues. She's just dying, okay? You know when it just kind of skims the surface? I don't really go into any depth. And this Brett seems to kind of, you know, help poor people. So she volunteers at a soup kitchen. And you're like, that's kind of patronising, really, okay? So... I'm sign off here. Not bad for a debut, but my God, was it patronising. And I'm sign off here. And bye now.